In my continued investigation into Hanson Robotics and its validity into whether its AI is in fact as developed as they claim or is it just a fancy robotics hiring behind the fact that their AI isn't up to much. We've been paying a lot of attention recently to Ben Goetzel, the head of AI at Hanson Robotics and someone that, as we've seen in my previous video, has a checkered history of chasing money for perhaps money's sake, with the promise of AI at the end of the financial rainbow. Now, we continue our look into Ben Goetzel once again after I discovered something pretty interesting just the other day. Let's take a shorter, thankfully, but still interesting look into the man behind the AI at Hanson Robotics, which oddly is starting to appear more like an odd game of where's Wally, or more to the point, what's Ben up to now? I'm Stu, this is 3B, and once more, we're going in. Ben Goetzel, the head of AI at Hanson Robotics, the home of Sophia, the rather sort of stiff and awkward, but strangely very human sounding robot, mm, mm, is a bit of a funding butterfly, running after the dollar wherever it may be. Now, I've probably been fairly criticized for being perhaps a little unfair on Ben's advancements in AI and what we are shown. However, I can only go on what I've seen in the documentary, The Machine of Human Dreams, where they follow and document his advancements, sorry for using fingers there, in AI and his travails at development and securing funding. What I've seen and what I've read by experts in the field and what the heads of AI at leading social media companies have said about him and his developments are not kind. Not kind indeed. Truthful, honest and on the money, you betcha. Now, as we know, Ben is at home with currently Hanson Robotics. But what is also interesting is that Ben is also working on another project. In fact, David Hanson is there and oddly or perhaps not, so are a few people from Ben's past that were involved in I hate to say it, some laughingly poorly managed and developed projects. Open cog, anyone? Now, this new project, which, which Hanson Robotics and Ben, for that matter, matter, are kind of sneaking in under the radar, is called SingularityNet.io, which happens to be the website too. Now, if you want to go and check it out, that's what it is. Now, let's not forget that Ben chases money. I don't blame him. Honestly, I don't. He has an idea of AI, and if he can convince people to give him money to develop that, then fair play to him. Perhaps, you know, his promises leave a lot to be desired to, to get that funding in the first place. And whether you believe that's morally right or wrong, I shall leave that sort of dilemma up to you. So what is singularitynet.ie? Well, it's an ICO. What's an ICO, Stu? I hear you ask. An ICO, and I happen to have a good understanding of this field as I'm involved in an ICO project myself called Dig Music. Now, that, that, that's by the by. An ICO is an initial coin offering, a means of raising funding for a business idea built on the blockchain with some form of digital token coin as a transactional base. Now people buy the coin, the token, in what is known as an initial coin offering, usually at a discount, with a view of that coin token going up in value based on the business model, development, or more likely, as we've seen sadly, speculation on ICOs in general. The SEC, for, this, for example, in the US are looking in very closely into ICOs as they claim rightly or wrongly that they are all mostly securities. Now, given that you can't publicly sell securities in the US and it's illegal, most ICOs look to secure funding from outside the US. Yet Singularity is interesting as it's a US venture where everyone working on it is based in the US. 
So it's hard to argue then that they are not selling a security or benefiting from the sale of a security of one of bringing money into the US. Again, something the SEC is looking into very heavily. Now, I'm not suggesting they are looking into them. It's something they do. The thing to understand with ICOs is that many of them are built on odd promises of some idea that may or may not work, but not really based on much. They're sometimes related more as a means of finding a way of getting a token developed and having an ICO rather than token the token serving a purpose behind the platform. The amounts raised in ICOs can be staggering, some selling hundreds of millions of dollars. And because people are buying a token, they're not taking any share. They're not buying any share in that company. So it's the perfect tool for raising funds for an idea. And if that idea is a good one, then they usually do really well, which is understandable. Even the bad ones, and <laughs> weirdly, seem to do quite well too. Technically, ICOs are hard to manage, develop, and launch. They consist of white papers, blue papers, special websites, pre-sales, public sales, and a whole host of technical stuff related to blockchain development. Even if you're running, say, on an existing blockchain, such as Ethereum, uh, the ERC20 blockchain, it's still really intense. It's still really difficult to get going. Now, Singularity Net looks good. It sounds good. Some transactional AOE model mumbo jumbo. There's a stupidly complex and overly wordy 54 page white paper, which having read it, it's more of a blue paper, which is the technical paper that you develop. Now, there are people involved as you are, would expect, many from, from Ben's past. David Hansen is there, why not? This is a potential to make millions. But the idea, to me anyway, seems confusing and somewhat flawed. It seems they're trying to transactionalize AI by developing a decentralized marketplace for AI. Is it really necessary? My beef with their ICO is this, which can easily be answered with, one, with this question. Is there a problem that needs to be addressed? And can this service application solve it and does it need to have a token? The answer is quite simply no. It could quite easily exist without it. And in fact, kind of does. It seems they're trying to create a problem where there is none and then address that problem that they've just made up with an application on the blockchain, blockchain to address a problem that isn't there so can they can then tokenize it so when they tokenize so why are they tokenizing something like this for the ico of course to get more money possibly a lot of money to have an ico you must have an exceptional reason for that service application to have a token it has to be the heart of what that application is needed and exists for. For example, with the one I'm involved with, Dig Music, the application requires a token as a, means, as a means of exchange and rights collaboration and collaboration management to each song created with the help of the Dig Music educational platform. So in that regard, how it works, you know, one feeds the other and protects the content and those involved through learning their craft through the platform. So in Dig Music's case, it addresses a problem, encourages development, and protects everyone involved. So that's the difference. The singularity, therefore, appears to be shoehorning tokenization into their broader view of AI development. So really, they can have an ICO to raise money. Raising money is what Ben Goetzel likes to do. Fine. The ideal investor. Investor who would just donate a massive amount of money with no strings attached would be the ideal situation. And one of the companies that he claims to be involved in with on, uh, on Singularity Net is OpenCog. And OpenCog, as we knew, blew a few years ago 10 million Hong Kong dollars before the guy, Chinese government pulled the plug on them and booted them out. 
So I can say, detect the emotion in my voice. And then it says I'll be bored and cheerful. Mm -hmm. But if I speak very angrily, you'll think I'm... Let me try. Mm -hmm. What the hell's your problem? I want to kill you! So where does this leave Hanson Robotics? Well, David Hanson's name is actually on the Singularity Net website, and I'm sure with any ICO from that, he will get his share. Now, I don't blame him. If I had been bankrolling Ben Goetzel, I would want, I would take any opportunity to have that investment returned, and then some. I certainly don't blame David Hanson for doing just that. But where does this leave Sophia and the AI at Hanson Robotics? Will Ben Goetzel run with the money from the Singularity Net ICO and do his own thing, leaving Hanson behind? Now, I can't see him continuing there. He's, he's, he's really, so it appears, only there because David Hanson is bankrolling him as part of the Hanson uh, Robotics project. If I were David Hanson, I'd be worried. What do you think? What do you think will happen? Have you seen the website, the singularitynet.io website, and the white paper? Do you think there is a good reason for an ICO? Uh, are you experienced in ICOs? Do you think I'm full of crap? Who knows? And should shut the hell up. Either way, you know, let me know. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. It's always cool and groovy when you guys do that. Consider too to subscribing. And I shall see you next time. Bye.